Who says sequels are never as good as the original? During our first season of Behind the Christmas Hits, we told you the story behind what Rolling Stone says is the greatest rock and roll Christmas song ever, Christmas Baby Please Come Home. This year for part two, we go even deeper into the story with the artist who made it famous, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Darlene Love. Behind the Christmas Hits with Drew Savage. It was originally recorded in 1963 for Phil Spector's Christmas album. When did Darlene first hear the song? Actually, in the recording studio with Philip, we were actually doing the Christmas album, and he said, uh, I know you have a lot of Christmas songs that you like, especially coming from church, because we do a lot of Christmas shows in our, in our churches. And uh, he let me pick the ones I wanted to sing, and I picked them all, and I thought I was done. You know, after uh, Silent Night and, and, and uh, Walking in a Winter Wonderland. And, and I said, then he said, oh, but we have one more to do, and it's being written right now. And I went, what do you mean it's being written right now? He said, it's an original Christmas song. And I went, Philip, nobody is going to like an original Christmas song. Because I just figured, you know, they have, when is the last time anybody recorded a, a original Christmas song? especially on a Christmas album that has all the old Christmas songs on it. So Ellie Greenwich and Jeff Berry were writing this song while we were in the studio, and I learned the song that very day we recorded it. How incredible is it to hear Darlene say that? I, it's such a great reminder that all of these classic Christmas hits were at one point brand new songs. And when they were new, there were people who thought no one would want to hear them. And now they're iconic why artists should absolutely continue to write new Christmas songs. You can't predict which is going to be the next classic. Darlene Love didn't feel an instant connection with Christmas Baby Please Come Home at all. It actually grew over time because I was a little leery about doing a original song, mm -hmm. you know, uh, at Christmas time. Uh, who was going to listen to it? Everybody wants to sing Silent Night and Frosty the Snowman and all the, the original Christmas songs. And uh, I was a little apprehensive, but actually in the recording studio, when we were recording the song, that's when I went, you know what? This sounds like a really great song. And, let's, and me still saying, you know, I hope it's a great song that everybody, you know, will listen to. Fun fact, Cher sings backup for Darlene on the song. Yes, yeah, she does. Wow. We, Phil kept, kept one. We had about seven or eight background singers at the time, and Cher was in the studio with us. By then, I knew Cher pretty well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Phil said, Cher, I know you can sing. Come on out there and help the, help the singers sing. Because he just kept adding singers. He even added Sonny Bono. With, and he couldn't sing, but he wanted, <laughs> he wanted more singers. And at the time, we couldn't really think about having... Uh, people that we didn't know that couldn't sing into the recording studio but <laughs> we ended up sunny after that but this is after we had been singing the song for a while you know we had put background parts on it already you know with our singers our professional singers that we knew could sing we had put it on and, and phil kept adding more people to it like he added sunny and he added share with Cher's voice on it i tell everybody all the time if you really listen to it you can tell Cher is singing in the background all of this talent. But Christmas Baby Please Come Home wasn't a hit right out of the gate. It took years. And while its popularity grew over the 70s and early 80s, Darlene credits her 28-year run of annual performances on David Letterman's show for making it a blockbuster. I really do That's what that believe that's what happened. We were doing a show called Leader of the Pack at a nightclub, uh, The Bottom Line in New York City. And Paul Schaefer was playing Phil Spector. And uh, he invited David Letterman down to see the show. And um, a lot of fans already knew, you know, Christmas Baby, but not a lot of people, you know, were really listening to that song. And uh, after he invited uh, David Letterman down to see the show, that exactly night on the show, he said, that is the greatest Christmas song I've ever heard. We need to have her on my TV show and let her sing this song, which I thought was only going to be one time. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being 27 years of singing that one song on that show. For the first appearance in 1986, it was just Darlene, Paul Schaefer, 
and the world's most dangerous band, Will Lee, Anton Figg, and Sid McGuinness. The guys didn't just play on the song, they were also her backup singers. But over the next 28 years, the performances seemed to get bigger every year. Soon there were sax players flying in on zip lines, massive orchestras, a dozen backup singers, snow falling in the studio. According to Darlene, those ideas all came from Paul Schaefer. But when Letterman decided to retire from late night TV, it meant the run would come to an end. So they put on the biggest performance yet with over 30 people on stage. Dave's desk was actually moved off set to accommodate all of the singers and musicians. During the final sax solo, Darlene climbed up on top of Paul's piano to sing the rest of the song. And when it was over, she stayed there when Dave came out to thank her because she didn't want to cry if he hugged her. Darlene now sings the song every year on The View and of course on her annual Christmas tours. Here's what happens after you record an iconic song. Lots of other people want to record it too, including Michael Buble, who did it on his Christmas album and sang it on his TV special. So you 2 has covered the song. Mariah Carey has done Christmas Baby, Please Come Home. <laughs> Michael Buble, Cher, Lady A. Do, do you ever Which listen? Which was wonderful, especially with Michael, because the night I, I, my phone, phone rang over the, off the hook that night, he sung it on his special. They said he was saying that, I hope I do this, this song justice, Miss Love. I said, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever listen to the other versions of the song, or can you? Oh, I have. Oh, I have. And I, I listen, and I'm, I'm not judgmental when I listen. I just, oh, well, that's great. And uh, Mariah Carey did such a wonderful version of it. I always did love her version. But I can't listen and judge. Everybody has a way of singing the only way they're singing. I know they weren't singing it to, to be like my version, what I, how I sang it. Uh, but everybody that, that d did record it did their own version of it, and I thought it was great. Darlene Love's original Christmas Baby Please Come Home continues to grow in popularity. In fact, in January 2021, it reached its highest ever chart position on the Billboard Hot 100, outranking the latest hits from Justin Bieber and Dua Lipa that week. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more. And for even more of my conversation with Darlene, subscribe to our podcast, which is linked down below.